Welcome to the ultimate tier list. What's up my nerd friends? So, you want to start playing Alchemy Star, but you are very confused about the game. What units should you use? How should you build a proper team? Well, this will be the guide for you. And this will be a very comprehensive tier list. It will include pretty much everything you need to know about unit with the explanation. And I just want to voice out, I did not make this tier list. Full credits go to Team Battle Franco or 4 mana. So, since this is not my tier list, I will be a little bit more harsh on it because, you know, I like to voice my opinion on other people's tier list. It's one of my favorite things to do. Before we begin, let me tell you about today's sponsor. Are you tired of mobile games hogging all your precious phone battery? Would you like to play mobile games on your PC, even though the games do not have a dedicated PC client? Well, LD Player might be the perfect solution for you. LD Player is an Android emulator that has pretty much all the stuff you would need. Smooth gameplay? Check. Customizable keybind? Check. Built-in macro maker? Check. Multiple instancing so you can play multiple mobile games at once? Check. Oh, also that is one of the best way to reroll. And most important of all, it's free. You do not need to pay a single cent to use LD Player. If you would like to play Alchemy Star or any mobile games on PC, head down to the description or pin comment to download LD Player now. Now back to the video. So before we begin, in order to guide you on how to use this tier list or navigate this tier list. So the first part, which is the FAQ, frequently asked question. So this part will be pretty useless in my opinion. It will tell you a little bit more about the information, how they rating the units. So we have the S rank preemptive conversion. So these are units that have uh, the preemptive keyword on their active skill which basically means they can use their active skill right away on turn one, and then they will go into cooldown after you use it. Usually having preemptive is very, very strong because by the times go on, you will face even more and more danger. So having your ability front load on the first turn, meaning you can kill stuff faster. Well, if stuff is killed, you will take less damage and you will be able to finish stage faster, which is a win-win. Now, conversion meaning the type of unit that convert tiles specifically. Uh, there are also another type of converters, which is the teleporters, but they will put them in the C tier. Now, I will not go too in depth into this part uh, of the FAQ. If you really would like to uh, watch the explanation of the Team Battle Franco explaining how they rate things, you can read it on your own free time. But the main thing I want to talk about is this. So this tier list mostly assumes Spire and Elysium as its focus. So if you don't know, Spire and Elysium is a game mode in Alchemy Stars. And they are rightly known as more of the hard content in Alchemy Stars. This is where these tier lists come in because in story mode, most of the time stages are not very difficult. So even without a tier list, we should be able to clear majority of it. But Inspire and Elysium, most of the time you will need a well-crafted team in order to beat it. And a lot of time, if you don't have a certain unit, you just straight up can't beat it. But it's okay because those game modes are permanent. They don't have any time limits. You can complete clear on your free time. And even if you don't clear it, which I don't, honestly, I haven't touched my Spire for like ever. And Elysium, I only clear one stages. So as a veteran player, even I don't clear them, so you don't really have to worry about them too much. But this tier list will still guide you a little bit better if you do want to build unit, because you don't want to build the wrong unit, right? So since this tier list is focusing on Spire and Elysium, a lot of other unit will be slightly incorrectly rated, uh, which I'll talk about it later. So now we have the general tier list. This will be the part I talk about the most. And we have four other section here, which will be the explanation on why they are rated. And I have to say it's very, very detailed. A lot of it are spot on, honestly. And I don't have much complaint about anything they say here, pretty much spot on. Um, one thing about Luke though, they did not really mention is Luke has another really good utility, which is he is a very good for destroying shield mechanic. So there are multiple monsters in Elk Star that have like a um, shield mechanic where if you hit the enemy, they will have less defense or something. And Luke can consistently hit a monster for three hits every turn. So this one thing I think they did not mention here, which is also why I really want to get Luke. Uh, I don't have Luke. So yeah, one of the good reasons. 
but I guess the shield mechanic is not that frequent in Spyro or Elysium, so I guess that's why they did not mention it. But in a lot of events or like stone training camps, a lot of the monsters have those kind of mechanics where it's just like take less damage before you get through the shield or something, or just like completely block the damage, which is the most common type of shield. But yeah, uh, explanation is really right. Uh, there are a couple one I disagree with, which I'll talk about later. But firstly, I just want to guide you through the tier list, how they work. So firstly, we're gonna look at six stars and then five star, three star, four star, three star. And there's one very funny one, which is Tour Dog, <laughs> which is obviously the ultimate unit in the game. Uh, if you didn't know, what is this? So yeah, Toto was given for free on April Fool, and yeah, he is the first two-star unit in the game, and he basically does nothing other than just dancing. <laughs> yeah, it's a troll unit, and there are a really good section here, which is the beginner or new player frequently asked questions, and you, it will answer a lot of uh, doubt you all have. So where should you spending my resource? And it says that you should rush story, which I agree. You should always rush story so you can unlock your Colossus more. And Colossus is the part of the game where you gain resource passively. And the more you unlock, the faster you gain those passive resources, which is very important in this type of game. If you do want to play long term. And is reloading necessary? In my opinion, no, absolutely not. Not really vital to the game at all, but it will help you if you do reroll. So if you want, I do have a reroll guide on my channel. You can check it out. And there are some other good questions here as well. One of the most frequent questions will be the team composition, which they recommend two DPS, two converters, and one flex unit, which is actually what this tier list is built on. DPS are generally detonators or sniper. They will be the unit which pump out the most amount of damage and converters are basically specifically tiles converters so the unit that makes tiles for a mono team and if you don't want mono team as mono team is basically a team using the same color or at least four same color the captain can be whatever but usually everyone just go five same color because it provide more flexibility on the captain swap or something and flex unit are basically whatever you want depending on the stage uh, this is a very standard team composition. You can go obviously one DPS, three converters, and one flex unit as well. Uh, I actually do that on my, I guess, best team or quote unquote best team. But yeah, depending on what you have, these are a general good guidelines to follow. And some terminology here, uh, if you ever join the community and talk about Alchemy Star, especially on the official Discord, you'll see these terms being thrown around a lot, especially MBT, which stands for Maximum Breakthrough. If you don't know, Breakthrough is basically the dupe system in the game, and you will need to get multiple copies to unlock specific part of the kit. Most notable one will be the Preemptive Strike, which allows you to use your ability on the first turn. A lot of uh, good units will be good only after they unlock the Preemptive Strike, especially unit with long cooldown. So yeah, uh, those keywords are very common. DPR, I don't see this being used that much. It's damage per round. It's only really for the <laughs> mathematic nerd out there that really cares about damage. But yeah, uh, for me, as long as I can clear the stage, I don't really care that much. Burst turn, uh, these are very good for cross converters specifically uh, or burst team. So good for unit with long cooldown and you want to make good use of their cooldown and create a burst scenario where you just kill the enemy on one or two turns and activate your aurora time which give you another turn and not take any damage and multiplier i, I don't really know what this is um i guess this basically tells you the damage calculation if you want to go ahead and see that you can feel free to do so and yeah that is pretty much the gist of how you should navigate this tier list now I'm gonna talk about something I don't agree with because of course, it's not my tier list. Obviously it's not perfect. <laughs> All right, one thing is Frostfire here. Okay, so Frostfire being on B tier, I'm fine, but I'm not fine with not having another tier for maximum breakthrough Frostfire. So if you don't know, unlocking maximum breakthrough Frostfire will give you the ability to stack her active skill damage to a very high amount. Honestly, on stages that have a lot of monsters on the battlefield, Frostfire can do a lot of work. And I will actually put at least one more tier for Frostfire maximum breakthrough on the A tier. Uh, she is a very strong but niche unit, but them not recognizing her strength is one thing I don't like. <laughs> 
obviously I do have a maximum breakthrough Frostfire myself, so I can vouch for her strength on certain stages, okay? Another thing is Amy here. So Amy is, I guess, quite underrated. It's one of the few 3-star units I would consider you should race to the maximum level and maximum equipment level. And maybe is the only 3-star I recommend maxing her level. So Amy, similar to Phyllishai, has an equipment where you get passive healing. And the closer you are to the flag, which is her active skill, you get defense increase and also get the healing increase. And there are many stages that has keywords such as survive for X amount of stages. Obviously, they don't really exist in Spire or Elysium, which is why I understand why they place Amy so low. But there are many stages where actually Amy is very strong at. So yeah, if you're looking for a decent early game healer, I think Amy is a very good choice because she can be very useful in end game as well. On certain event stages, if Tordok decided to release more like survive X stages, I think Amy is very, very strong. Don't look down on Amy. And another one is Uriel. Uh, I agree Uriel being on C tier on the base Uriel because 4 cooldown is way too long. On the breakthrough tree, which she unlocked the preemptive strike, she will get the A tier, which I respect. But I don't like there's no one more tier for maximum breakthrough Uriel. So if you don't know what maximum breakthrough Uriel is, she will get another keyword that says that fire tile are more likely to come out from her active skill, which is resetting the whole board. In Alchemy Stars, entering a stage is free, usually, right? Whether it's Elysium or Spire or most event stages, like the hard content, entering them are free, which is why Oreo is actually a very strong unit on Maximum Breakthrough because you can just reset a board over and over again for a favorable starting board on the first turn and can get extremely high amount of Fire Tau this way, especially on Maximum Breakthrough. So I would at least put one more tier for Uriel here, at least at the S rank. I think people are really underestimating how strong Max Breakthrough Uriel is. And I remember back in the early days where I was still a newbie <laughs> and there was an endgame event called Endgame where the content is very, very difficult because it's an event, it has time limit. So if you didn't clear it within this time limit, you will not get the rewards. How I managed to clear it while being a free boy player is I actually borrow a max spiritual Uriel for majority of the fight. And what I do is I just keep resetting the board with Uriel until I get a very, very strong, favorable opening board. And I managed to clear it by having just super high amount of fire tile. And my main team was fire at that time. So yeah, that's my opinion on Uriel at least. Another one I want to, I guess, mention at least. I understand why Lester and Clover is being put on C here because Spire or Elysium don't really need them. But these two units are actually way better than you think. Uh, definitely not on C tier because C tier it says that they are playable but they are not capable for clearing the hardest content which is false by the way. I believe Lester and Clover are very capable on clearing the hardest content given the stage. So they are a poison unit. So specifically for damage over time build, they can pretty much chip down the boss health little by little because they do percentage damage. The one big thing is you have to raise them to ascension 3 at least to unlock the extra poison effect. Same with Clover, but Clover is a 3 star unit. So you have to only go up to ascension 2. One big thing about poison unit specifically is usually you would use it alongside with nails, which is one of the best bleed unit in the game. And usually you will want bleed and poison in the same team so that you can actually kill the boss with damage over time. And because of how nails works, nails want to be on low health below 25 so it can apply maximum amount of bleeds every single time because of that playstyle using Odi as the main source of poison applier will be a lot more dangerous because Odi need to hit the enemy which is not always easy to do especially since you're using a damage over time build you don't have converters in your team so moving around the map is not going to be easy and while Odi is still a fantastic poison applier I would say Odi alone is not enough you need to at least have one of these alongside with Odi in order to form a I guess a good damage over time build. One of my favorite damage over time build is actually using either Lester or Clover. So Lester plan mines on the board. So you need to make sure the enemy can move around. If the enemy doesn't move, I would prefer a Clover because Clover has better active skill that deal with enemy that don't move around. So I'll have one of these units as the captain and I'll have Odi 
and nails and we, i will have two other teleporters in my team as just to navigate around the board so that i can maintain 25 percent health while not getting hit and i will just keep doing damage from a range and the enemy will never be able to hit me because i have two teleporters i can just keep teleporting around the map the the boss can't catch me so yeah i do think this two unit are actually worth to race but not immediately because i would say focusing on your mono team first before you start raising the poison or damage over time build because mono team will be able to help you clear majority of the fight uh, specifically the story stages and most event content as well so yeah uh, i'm not gonna comment on every single unit on this tier list because well obviously team battle franco already did a really good job on explaining every single unit why they are good why they deserve their rank so you can go ahead and check this out there's also another channel i want to shout out which is Rinity. so Rinity is a channel on my radar for a long time he always posts guide for like difficult content that i actually myself find very useful i mean sometimes i'm stuck on the stage as well and i go to Rinity for answer thank you Rinity. so if you find yourself uh having a hard time with a specific event content I believe Vinity will have the guide for it. So I want to showcase that actually you don't have to always follow the mono team structure depending on the stage. So this is a very recent event we got. I believe it's called Banquet's End. And there's one stage here, which is called EX2. And the recommended team to beat this stage is actually a very unconventional. You can see we have a Clover as the captain here, Pasolo, which is a... Uh, a very consistent bleed unit and she also have the conversion so you can convert one forest how every two turn i think and we have amy which i recommended as uh, a budget healer and we have kafka as well if you watch this video you will know that he used kafka to kind of destroy the clones on the map that will do heavy damage to you and may which is very niche unit only pretty much for this stage, stage gimmick is restore sanity uh this stage has the sanity system where if you're on low sanity you will take more damage and of course uh the board will be like full of craps but yeah, um, I just want to show that on different scenario, you could actually have a very wacky team that you do uh, use damage over time instead of just unga bunga. I have big stats. And yeah, this is not the only boss. Uh, I can show other bosses as well, which has really wacky team. For example, this one as well. Okay, so you can see here, we have a fire element unit, thunder element, water element, another fire, another fire. So yeah, uh, depending on the stage, you do could use or actually should use different elements. But these are a little bit more hard to explain because it depends on the stage itself. And which is why this game actually has surprisingly high amount of depth. Uh, there's no one sentence fit all sure the mono team is the like the go-to team for majority of a general content but a lot of time on hard content you have to use your you have to use that head of you to actually figure out an optimal strategy if you still find this guy unhelpful or if you are still very confused about how you should approach alchemy star on june 2 which is the start of the first year anniversary I will be starting a new account which is completely free to play and I will do a speed run to getting Vice Alter. Well, see how fast I can get to Vice Alter and I'll be posting daily. So if you are a new player, you can follow along with me and I'll tell you what you should do or what I will do <laughs> on a day-to-day -day basis. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.